What's going on my YouTube family? Sergeant Greybeard at Greybeard Gaming Group. Today is, what is today? Thursday. It's Thursday, people. Thursday, December 17th. And as always, I hope this message finds you healthy and safe. We've gotten a lot of questions over the last few days asking what the rest of the year is going to look like for the game. So we want to take some time, answer your questions, and go over a few of the things you guys have been uh, reaching out about. Now, if you happen to be new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Secondly, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We would love for you to be a part of our gaming family. And if you enjoyed this or found it helpful, take a quick second and hit that like button. It really does help us out. So the first thing I want to talk about today has to do with farming for XP. Now, last week I put out a video and I was showing you one of my favorite territory controls to hit up because it's right next to a fast travel location and you can do this thing over and over again. Many of you reached out and said, hey, are you still aware of the bug that's going on that can give you double XP when you do events like this? And in theory, it could work in any event whatsoever in the world, but your timing has to be perfect in order to actually get the double XP. And as I show you how to do this, one thing I'd like to mention is that this is not a glitch. This is not an exploit. It's just a workaround. Developers have known about this for three or four months. And the reason it's not a big issue is because it doesn't affect your interaction with other players. I mean, this thing is just about XP. That's what you're gaining from it. Seasonal levels, shade levels, things like that. So anyway, as I was mentioning earlier, I fast travel to this territory control. Now, I've chosen this one because, like I said, it's close to a fast travel point, and I know the layout of the NPCs and how they spawn. However, as I mentioned, this can work on any world event. So if it's a convoy or a different type of patrol, whatever you want to do. Again, I like this one. You can see by the footage, I was able to clear this thing in less than a minute. And then I can just reload it and just keep doing it over and over again. I also happen to like the fact that there's only one wave of NPCs. So anyway, you see what happens once I clear out the NPCs, a key drops. I pick it up. I open the map. What I do then is activate all the directives. I confirm that, open the game back up, and you'll see a 9 second timer in the bottom. At that point, that is when you will open up the gear stash. You'll see here I open it up. All directives were active before I opened up the gear stash. Therefore, I was able to get that double XP for the event. Once the timer hits zero, you will then be fast traveled back to a safe house and you'll see in a second the XP that I earned for doing this was 329,000 and that's what you get when all directives are active. At this point, what I do is go back to my world map, I deactivate the directives, that resets the map again, and that spot usually does pop up again. However, if it doesn't, you can just reset control points and go back and forth until you're done farming for XP. And the reason why I bring this up is that this is really beneficial for players who do not have a lot of time to play on a daily basis. They want to level up their seasonal level so they can get to those rewards and they want to obviously up their shade level as well. The other benefit is the fact that this does not affect PvP play at all. And what I mean by that is that it's not one of those glitches that everyone's using in the dark zone and all of a sudden you have all this extra armor and you have, you know, your shields unbreakable for the entire time. I mean, th this is not one of those things that really, really messes with, you know, player versus player. Which now, my friends, brings us to talking about issues players are still having in the Dark Zone in PvP. So as most of you know, there was a memento glitch that was taking place. It was brought up, I think, about a week, week and a half ago. And last Tuesday, a few days ago, they implemented a patch which fixed it. And by the way, if you're still seeing that in the Dark Zone or Conflict or any PvP whatsoever, please let me know in the comments down below. It's something we definitely want to pass on, and that's something that obviously affects everyone's gameplay and we want fixed immediately. We have heard, however, that the Vanguard shield glitch is still going on. And basically, I don't know how to really do this thing. I know you have to be in a group to do it. It works in the regular world and Dark Zone as well. And basically, you do this one thing and your shield becomes completely, like, unbreakable for the entire time. And my friends, this is something that we've been hearing about since September. I mean, it's been discussed on all the forums, all these different places. And the problem is, you know, while let's say if you're just playing the game itself, a shield that never takes any damage whatsoever is awesome. Like if you're just running missions, sure, that'd be cool. 
However, if you are in the dark zone or you're playing conflict or any one of those things and you're lighting someone up and they're just holding a shield standing there and nothing's happening, it's more than frustrating. Like it just makes the whole gameplay unenjoyable and that's why so many people in that aspect of the community are completely frustrated. And I mean, that's one of the things that they need to fix immediately. And you can see how quickly that things can change. If we go back to the damage glitch in March, you saw they put out three patches in like four days. Like it was absolutely insane. They need to fix these things as well. And like you guys know, I don't really step foot in the dark zone, but we hear from so many people who are frustrated that every time something major happens in the game and it's really something that the community is talking about, it seems to really take a long time to fix. Next, my friends, we want to talk about what's happening in the game right now and what we can look forward to between now and the beginning of the year. So as most of you know, the Viper League started this week. We have a global event that starts next Tuesday, and that's also when the first apparel event arrives as well. So starting off with next week's global event, it's called Golden Bullet, and it's the only new type of global event that we're getting. However, it's also the first time that the stars that you earn, you can spend in any way you want towards gear, items, different rewards like that. And in my opinion, that's a great addition to the game. It's something that I will definitely try out. I hope it's enjoyable to do. We'll see what happens. And as always, next Tuesday when it starts, I will do a standalone video showing you what's up and giving you our opinion. And in regards to the apparel event that starts next week, that is not Codename Nightmare. Codename Nightmare does not start until the beginning of February, and we've gotten a lot of questions in regards to that, and why did they just change it from new content to just an apparel event? And unfortunately, my friends, I'm not sure if we'll ever get a direct answer to that question. But what I know is this, is if we go back to the Ubisoft Forward event, they made the major announcement about Codename Nightmare, and they're not going to do something like that if it just has to do with apparel. Now, I happen to have heard from a few people that I know who know some people who work on the game, and basically what it boils down to is this, is they were working on something. They wanted something launched. That's why they made this major announcement. So when things like this happen, it really does bum them out as well. And in my opinion, what happens to be really tough for the developers and game designers is that they're the ones who get yelled at when things like this happen, but it's not up to them sometimes, meaning the studio takes over, certain things happen, and unfortunately things just get pushed or completely canceled. You guys have heard me say before, this in my opinion is just another sign that the Division 3 is going to be coming out within the next year, year and a half. And it has to do with the fact that, you know, these patterns are what we saw when the first game transitioned to the second. And I think they knew the second one was kind of a lost cause. And actually, when I say lost cause, what I mean by that is the fact that their goal in launching this new content, whatever it was going to be, was trying to bring back a majority of the player base. But I'm pretty sure they know that ship has sailed. The people who are playing now are the ones who've been with it since day one. And also, there happens to be a lot of new players as well. Finally, my friends, we want to get into talking about some issues in regards to what the future of the game is going to be. Now, unfortunately, we are not going to hear from the development team directly, I would say, until at least January 6th, which is the first day they could possibly do the next day to the game. Now, I don't know what news they'll actually have for us then. It's going to be one of those things where I think it's going to be a really short one. You know, they're getting back from break. There's nothing really going on. Hopefully, they're going to address the optimization issues as well as a lot of you have reached out saying you're still dealing with Delta issues. So hopefully, they'll get on top of that as well. A perfect example of something that has to be fixed that's going on, that's been going on, excuse me, for a long time is right now as I'm recording this, I left my Xbox on while I was doing all this on my laptop and what took place was I got invited to do a legendary Floor 100 on Legendary from one of my clan members. Now I'm thinking, hey, family first. So I pause the recording and I'm joining the group and I'm in the group and it's going great and we're getting through the first part of Floor 100. We get to the Hunters, all this stuff, and my game completely crashes multiple times. Now the first time it happens, I'm able to log back in and I get back into the group and we're still at that first phase, you know, on Floor 100. Then it happens a second time and he keeps inviting me to the group, but it says server is full, or excuse me, group is full. And it's like, I don't even know how to fix this problem. So first of all, the JMAD45 who invited me to the group, I am still trying to get in there, my friend. As we talk, I've got my, you know, 
my controller in hand. I'm pressing every button. I'm going to the notifications. I see that you're inviting me to the group. It still says the group is full. Like, I'm, I'm not giving up. No man left behind. Like, I'm in this, my friend. And by the way, this has a major effect on the group itself because it's not just about the player getting kicked off. What happens is when you're in a group of four and you lose a person, it takes a while for the game to scale down its difficulty. And so once again, then the, the computer thinks you have four people and you really have three. Now, in full transparency, and I've said this before, this has rarely happened to me. I've been really, really lucky with this game. But for some reason, when it happens, they really make it count. And now I'm trying to log in. So right now, it's 9.15 a.m. Pacific time. I'm trying to log in, and it says, for some reason, Tom Clancy's Division took too long to start. And really, the funny thing is, is as I was, when I was prepping this video, I was going to end it by saying, which is still true, I'm having a lot of fun in this game since Title Update 12 dropped. Like, I'm loving the new weapons, new gear sets, new builds, but when things like this happen, it completely bums me out. And on that note, my friends, I think we're going to start to wrap this video up, not on the note that I'm bummed out, but the fact that, well, I am bummed out, but the fact is, is I want to log back on, get back to my group, because I hate when stuff like this happens. It drives me crazy, because the last thing I want to do is have my gameplay affect other people. As always, I want to take a moment and thank you all for the continued support. You guys have been amazing. As far as the rest of the week goes, we will put out another video tomorrow. It's either going to be another version of a Scorpio build, which some of you have asked for, or showing you some of our favorite places to farm in regards to missions and control points. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this thing, if you are new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We would love for you to be a part of our gaming family. If you enjoyed this or found it helpful, take a quick second and hit that like button. It really does help the channel out. But most importantly, as always, take care, be kind, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again, everyone.